right. All right. What is going on, people? It's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns, host of that show called Sports Plus Life. Yeah, we got a lot to get into today. So cut it off, cut it off, turn it all the way off. Huh? I swear I need to come up with a new theme music. I mean, that that track was originally made for me, you know, for a song that, of course, that I have posted on YouTube and SoundCloud. Uh, I guess I've just been lazy in that regard. Now I've kind of gotten used to it, but I need to make an actual Sports Plus Life track um, for this show. But anyway, how's everybody doing today? Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Bravon Towns. This is Sports Plus Life. And um, if you are a first time listener, definitely don't hesitate to hit that subscription button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family. It is a beautiful Monday out here in the Richmond VA. Absolutely gorgeous. It is a wonderful, wonderful 70 to uh, 74 degree day. (laughs) I'm getting my words wrong. I'm sorry. A wonderful 74 degree day in uh, Richmond, Virginia. And I ain't going to lie to you, bruh. You know, once, you know, I'm off the day. Thank God. Once my son get out of school and we finish his homework, we going outside. I'm going to take him and his sister out and burn some energy. Burn some energy. The whole, we can all go. The family can all go. Me. Kia, Roman, London, it's it's wonderful outside, it is, but anyway, we have a lot to talk about today, we do, absolutely we do, and um, I will say this, it is Monday, April the 8th, 2019, And um, today we are going to get into college basketball because today is the national championship game. And then uh, we have some football to discuss as well as a bit of basketball and um, also uh, some topics in uh, in the in the world of celebrities will be the life topic today. I'm not going to lead with it like I did the other day, but man, I mean, it's definitely something that I would like to uh, uh, touch on today. But um, I hope everybody's having a great day. You know, if it's Monday, I mean, it's Monday. If you off work already or if you had the day off, you know, more power to you. Because today is such a beautiful day outside. It is such a beautiful day. Not trying to be funny or anything like that. I'm being dead serious. Give God the glory. Because this is a wonderful spring uh, spring day out here. And I'm not going to just, even though I'm trying to heal from a sprained ankle, I can't just sit in the house for this. No, 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 no. But we're going to have some fun with this episode. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right. Here we go. It is Monday night, 9 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time. The college basketball national championship game. And guess who the hell is in it? You guess right. The Virginia Cavaliers. My Virginia Cavaliers are playing for their first ever college basketball national championship and they are going up against from the big 12 the texas tech red raiders who also are playing for their first ever national championship in college basketball in their school's history as well man i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you most people that you hear on these talk radio shows or sports talk in general are absolutely sick to their stomach about this game between Virginia and Texas Tech. But you know what? I don't care. Because it's something that is is sometimes tends to get lost in sports. 
and it is that defense wins championships. These are the top two defensive teams in college basketball. During the season, Virginia was ranked number one. Uh, Texas Tech was ranked number three as far as points per game. During the tournament, Texas Tech has been slightly better as far as statistics are concerned. And this probably will be a, a uh, rock'em, sock'em, you know, all, you almost need shoulder pads and cleats on this one. But, um, hey, it is the final game, and each team deserved to be there. Sing it with me. It's the final countdown. Come on, UVA. Come on, Charlottesville. Come on, State of Virginia. Stand the fuck up. We have got to get this done. I'm sorry I got off topic. Um, but uh, Saturday, the last time I did a show before the Final Four, I picked Virginia and Michigan State. Now, I was right on one, wrong on the other one. And a quick recap of the UVA-Auburn game, you know, it was nip and tuck close throughout in the first half. Auburn led by three at the half. And then Virginia came out and proceeded to honestly dominate Auburn for really the first 15 minutes of the second half and were up by 10 with five minutes to go. And then proceeded to have what was going to look like an all-time collapse as they as Auburn went on a 14 to nothing run and led by four points with under uh, 30 seconds to go in the game. And Kyle Guy missed, and the Kyle Guy made a free throw, uh, made, excuse me, made a three-point shot from the corner to make it 61-60. And now, of course, UVA fouls Jared Hunter, who's an over 80% free throw shooter, makes the first one, misses the second. It's 7.6 7. seconds left. Uh, Texas, uh, excuse me, Auburn had fouls to give. So their coach, Bruce Pearl, instructed them to give the fouls. They fouled Ty Jerome once. And then... Um, they fouled Ty Jerome again as the ball bounced off of his foot. And he was uh, he picked it up, started dribbling, and he was fouled again. Then they fouled one more time, leaving 1.6 seconds left. And uh, Virginia called a timeout. They come back, throw the ball to Kyle Guy, who shoots a three from the corner. And a whistle blows. A foul was called on uh, Dowdy of Auburn. And, of course, now... The Auburn side of the crowd is going absolutely bonkers. You know, they, oh, how can you call that? How can you call that? As soon as I saw the play, I screamed he was fouled. Because Dowdy, Kyle Guy went straight up. He didn't fade away. He went straight up, which means you have to give the shooter the right to land to come down from his shot. And Dowdy undercut Kyle Guy. It was a clear foul. It was a clear foul. And... What I thought was going to happen is that you were going to have all of these Auburn people, well, particularly, or not even just Auburn people, just analysts saying, hey, how can you make the call? How can you make that foul call at that moment in the game with a spot in the national championship on the line? But I was shocked because everybody who talked about that play was like, no, he was fouled. Even Charles Barkley, who's an Auburn alum, said, to, uh, as a fan of, uh, of Auburn, I have to say that was a foul. So then... Ten minutes later, after the game is over, uh, a CBS analyst promptly points out that it should have been a double dribble called on Ty Jerome before the second foul that was given by Bryce Brown. Now that Ty Jerome, you know, when he tried to dribble behind his back, kicked the ball off of his, um, off of his foot, instead of dribbling the ball back up. He grabbed it with two hands, picked it up, and started dribbling again. Well, they're saying that by the letter of the law, that should have been a double dribble. Okay. Okay, fine. The officials missed that one. But now there's this, there's just this national outcry of Auburn got robbed because there was no double dribble called. Let me tell you guys something, first of all. Okay, by the letter of the law, yes, he did double dribble. But during the moment of the game, at least I know when I was watching it, nobody said a damn thing about a double dribble until the game was over with, and that was by a rules expert for CBS. Nobody was thinking about double dribble. 
the officials weren't thinking about because weren't thinking about double dribble because the officials were paying attention on when to blow their whistle because they knew Auburn was going to intentionally foul Virginia because they had fouls to give. So nobody in the like when when Ty Jerome kicked the ball off of his foot and picked it up and started dribbling. Nobody in the crowd started screaming double dribble. Nobody from the Auburn sideline, from their coaching staff, started screaming at the referee double dribble. What they were screaming about was the foul call on Kyle Guy, who much props made every single free throw. I mean, that is that is pressure. You going up to the line, you're down two with .6 to go, and you know that if you make all three free throws, your team is going to the national championship game. I mean, that had to feel like a lonely world. And what did Kyle Guy do? Motherfucker Clutch got up there and made every last free throw. Motherfucker Clutch. Now, take that all you naysayers. Biatch. All you anti-Virginia hating ass people. Don't do that. So... Um, yeah, so that's what's been the big controversy. Oh, the missed double dribble call. And I was listening to uh, uh, this guy while I was working yesterday on uh, sports radio who he said that he was there courtside. And he said, nobody heard a whistle. If you watch the replay, if you watch the replay, you you would think that Auburn had won the game because you saw the reaction of the players. They looked like they had just won the game. The University of Virginia looked like they had just lost the game. And I went back and I watched it. I'm like, dude, what are you? What, what were you looking at? Now, granted, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, you're wrong for your opinion because you were there. I was not. But from watching what I watched, you could one, you could clearly hear the whistle. Two. Auburn did not run off the court or make it start celebrating, thinking that they had won. No, none of the Auburn players did that. They started putting their hands on their heads saying, oh, my God, did they just call a foul? Mama D. Diakite, immediately after the ball went off of the rim, started pumping his fists and clapping because he heard the whistle. So what we, what was this guy watching? Because clearly the reactions that he said that he – saw in person was clearly not the reaction that if you had seen it on TV and like I said maybe it was the angle he was sitting at or whatever but clearly now the the, the crazy thing is is that I've seen the video of the Auburn fans on campus that ran out after Kyle got missed the shot they ran out screaming thinking that they had won and were out there for a few minutes until, you know, the video went viral that they lost. Not trying to be funny, but that was pretty funny. <laughs> but in the other game, Texas Tech, you know, in a nip and tuck first half, just in the second half, just took it right to Michigan State. You know, they got hot. Um, and they did it without the best game from their um, from their star player. Uh, Jared Culver only had 10 points. He was struggling. But... Um, Matt Mooney picked it up big time. He had uh, 22 points, and he was just knocking them down from that uh, three-point line. And like I said, Texas Tech's defense, you know, they're, they're Big 12 football school, and they play college basketball defense as if they are um, playing football. They are in your chest. They are, they are at you. They are coming at you. So this is going to be a head knocker. And, you know, I'm hyped because I've been waiting my whole I've been waiting my whole life just to see UVA in a final four. But now to see them in a national championship game is and it's not going to be easy. Now, I'm now, you know, there are people who are saying, um, you know, usually the consensus when you have a national championship game is like, yes, we hope this is a great game. As a Virginia fan, I don't. I hope we beat the living shit out of Texas Tech. I don't want this game to be close. I want it to be seven minutes left in the second half, and the, and there is no doubt that Virginia is going to win the game. You know, that's just me. And to these people out here saying that, um, oh, this is ugly. You know, this is the ugliest national championship game ever. Oh, why is Virginia there? Why is Texas Tech there? Oh, I can't stand Virginia's style of play. 
kiss my ass. I hope you catch syphilis from a Norwegian prostitute. If you don't like it, damn it, don't watch it. How about that? What about the wiener? How about that? Oh, the over-under is the lowest ever that has been. So what? So what? See, this is this is this is you as this is people being a trained audience. You know, you're just used to wanting to see Duke there or Kentucky or or uh, North Carolina or Kansas. You got Michigan State in there. Michigan State. Well, this is Tom Izzo's eighth Final Four, so it's not like he's a stranger. Not like Michigan State is a stranger. But I mean. You know, what, there will be a school, there will be a university, a new university added to the long list of champions in the history of NCAA college basketball. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything wrong with that. After tonight, either the University of Virginia or Texas Tech will be a national champion in college basketball for the first time in their school's history. Why are we bitching about that? What, because they play defense? Well, defense wins championships. Isn't that the notion? But people are saying, well, this isn't entertaining. It's only what you make it. It's only what you make it. But UVA, bring it home, baby. Bring it home, okay? Bring it home. Long overdue. Like I said last time, this is a redemption story. From being the laughing stock of college basketball just 365 days ago to potentially hoisting a national championship trophy for the first time. Let's finish it. One more game. 40 more minutes. Possibly overtime. Again, I hope not. People say, do you hope it's a great game? No. I hope we kick the fucking teeth in. But anyway, um, you know, let's get to it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this game underway. But um, now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the NFL for a segment. Um, pretty sure everybody knows now, uh, has has heard as far as it's just a bunch of off-field beefs that's been going on with the NFL this season. I mean, it's crazy. You know, you had Antonio Brown versus Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Then you had Le'Veon Bell versus the Steelers. And then you had Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers taking jabs at each other. And now, you know, it's Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, um, Antonio Brown received a a, a message on Twitter from a fan, you know, just an anonymous fan. It it says at AB84 and at Raiders, and it's a picture of Juju Smith-Schuster, and it says most valuable player because Juju Smith-Schuster was uh, voted the most valuable player for the Pittsburgh Steelers by the by his teammates. So Antonio Brown says on Twitter. Emotion. Boy fumbled the whole postseason in the biggest game of the year. Everyone went blind, too busy making guys famous. Not enough reality these days. By the way, check the list. Okay, so he got in his feelings and now he wants to attack Juju Smith-Schuster. Well, my man Juju clapped back on him. My man Juju clapped back on him, and he said, uh, keep your emotions off the internet in one tweet, you know. And in the second tweet, he said, all I ever did was show that man love and respect from the moment I got to the league. I was genuinely happy for him when he got traded to Oakland with a big contract, and now he takes shots at me on social media? (laughs) Well, yeah. Yeah, he did. He did, but uh, Juju was not Juju was not finished clapping back by no means. He said, crazy how big that ego got to be to take shots at people who show you love. SMH, which we all know stands for shaking my head. So, and then on top of that, he posted a quote on Twitter that said, never argue with a fool. Onlookers may not be able to tell the difference. A quote by Mark Twain. And that's powerful, you know. 
that's powerful and i i tend to agree with that statement so now what do you come up with i'm gonna say this antonio brown who is regarded as maybe the best receiver in football dude you 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 really gotta chill I mean, you don't have to do nothing. You're a grown-ass man, but you're not going to win this one. You're not going to win this one. You know, you may have had people uh, supporting you in regards to your issues with uh, Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers organization. I totally get that. But you're not going to win this one with Juju Smith-Schuster because he hasn't done anything to you. All he did was come out and and say something nice about his quarterback and support his quarterback amidst the back and forth between you and the Steelers organization in regards to Ben Roethlisberger. Now, I don't know why you're getting in your feelings about Juju because I remember um, five years ago when Emmanuel Sanders left Pittsburgh and went to Denver and said that Peyton Manning is like playing with Peyton Manning is like heaven. It's like a quarterback's heaven or something of of that nature. And it was taken as if that might have been a shot at Ben Roethlisberger, who was the first person to come to Ben Roethlisberger's defense on social media, Antonio Brown, saying, oh, stop hating this, that, and the third. Now the situations have completely reversed. And you're now you're trying to go back and forth and say Juju cost y'all the season and this, that, and the third. You're not going to win this one because, one, you're about to be a 31-year-old man who just got seriously compensated for his demand to be traded from the Pittsburgh Steelers. You got what you wanted, bro. You won. You got traded from Pittsburgh. You got a fat new contract. And you're still worried about what they're doing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dude, you are now in California. You know, you won. You're not going to you're not going to win coming at a 22 year old kid who hasn't done anything to you. You know, Juju Smith Schuster is is like been like one of the darlings of the league ever since he came in, because the first there was the the report on ESPN that he was riding a bike to practice because at that time he was 20. He didn't even have his license yet. And everybody was like, oh, and then you got him, you know, the the touchdown celebrations and the hide and go seek with him and Le'Veon Bell and, you know, the, the Pizza Hut commercials. And you're not going to win this one coming at Juju because Juju is, is he, he hasn't done anything. He's doing the same thing you did back when your career was first started. He's just trying to get the bag. He's just trying to get the bag. And so you're not going to do nothing. You're not going to win against a guy who hasn't done anything to you. And on top of that, has been balling. He's balled out since he got to Pittsburgh. My man's caught for over 1,400 receiving yards this season. So, Antonio Brown, you need to let it go. You need to let it go. I'm serious. L-I-T-F-G. Let it the fuck go. Because what are you accomplishing by keeping on taking jabs at your now former teammates? I mean, that's just, that's dumb, that's ridiculous, that's retarded to me. Just leave it alone. Focus on trying to build a good rapport with Derek Carr. Because, you know, you could very well wake up on week uh, on week eight of the season and say, damn, I miss Ben Roethlisberger. That could happen. I'm just saying, bro. L I T F G. Quickly. Quickly. Because the more you keep on taking jabs at the Steelers, they're going to start saying, well, damn, Ben Roethlisberger don't look that bad because look at how he's acting. He's not even here anymore. I mean, I'm not, everybody's their own different person, but you know, sometimes the approach that people can take, sometimes people need to look at another person and not copy them, but maybe try to adopt the approach that they're taking. You're not hearing Odell Beckham take any pot shots at the Giants. And he didn't even want to be traded. You know, he didn't even want to be traded. You did, you demanded it. Odell didn't want to leave New York, but he got traded to Cleveland and he was just like, wow, I was shocked, but I'm in a great situation. You know, um, I can't wait to get started. But Antonio Brown, you still talking shit about Ben Roethlisberger and and Juju Smith-Schuster now because he defended his quarterback. 
I think it's well known that Ben is a suck ass leader. So you just need to, you know, just need to leave it at that. And don't come at, don't come at Juju. Juju is just trying to get that bag. And and Juju, and he, like I said, he clapped back. Because now he has you looking like a damn fool. And I know AB don't care about what nobody think about him. But now you're looking like a damn fool, my G. Real talk. So just stop worrying about the black and yellow, dude. And just worry about the silver and black. I mean, I'm wondering when John Gruden is going to try to put a muzzle on Antonio Brown because, I mean, I'm sure he knew what he signed up for when he was getting him because as quiet as it's kept, John Gruden likes the attention. John Gruden likes the attention as well. But, you know, if it's if it if this shit spills into August and September, then it may be a problem. It may very well be a problem. So with that being said, let me move on to the N B of the A. And I'm quickly gonna go over some playoff talk with you guys. Um the Brooklyn Nets clinched a playoff spot last night. Um, and I thought in the Eastern Conference that they would have had the toughest road because I, I was looking at the last seven games of their schedule and it was absolutely treacherous. But they um, they're in, and the um, the Orlando Magic clinch a playoff spot, and I, I I don't know who would have seen that coming. I, honestly, Orlando hasn't been relevant since 2012. And that was the last year that they had Dwight Howard. So this, you know, I kind of looked up about a week ago. I was like, Orlando is could possibly make the playoffs? Them? You know, not not saying that in a bad way. Just like, I mean, you just haven't heard from, <laughs> you know, you haven't heard from Orlando in a, quite a long time. You know, so, I mean, great for the Orlando Magic fans. I actually have a homeboy who is a loyal Orlando Magic fan and, um, I need to hit him up and <laughs> and just I guess congratulate him because hey it's still the dark ages for the for the Lakers so Disney World beats out Disneyland uh, so the last playoff spot in the East uh, that's looking to be clinched is between the uh, Detroit Pistons Charlotte Hornets and the Miami Heat Detroit has a one game lead and personally I think that they're gonna get in. I think that they're going to get in. They have two games left. They're home to Memphis tonight, and they are at New York on Wednesday. So I think the Pistons are going to get in. So I sorry, I don't think Dwayne Wade will be in the playoffs in his swan song. I think that Wednesday, April 10th, the final day of the regular season, will be uh, his last game. They're at Brooklyn, and Brooklyn will probably rest everybody unless they – I mean, they could be still be playing for seeding. So they could still be playing for seeding because as it stands right now, the Nets are number seven. No, excuse me. The Nets are number six. They have the same record as Orlando. So they're currently sitting in the sixth spot due to tiebreaker, which means if the playoffs started today, they would be playing the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, as far as the Western Conference goes, the Warriors clinched the number one seed last night which means the road to the NBA Finals through the West will have to go through Golden State. They will have home court advantage. But it, like I said before, since I first started talking about basketball on the show, it doesn't matter. Golden State's going to win it anyway. I'm just interested to see how the Eastern Conference playoffs are going to shake out because once June gets here, it's going to be Dub City all over again. What about the wiener? And, the, you know, and what kills me is the motherfuckers who actually act surprised. <laughs> I mean, the Warriors are taking this shit. They're taking it. You know, they might say farewell to Kevin Durant. Who knows? But all signs are looking at, you know, KD going to New York. So what? You know, and, you know, if he does go to New York, you know who's going to be the favorite to win the championship next year? Golden State. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is if they want to take it there. Now, on a kind of funnier note, you know, this has been getting a lot of attention, this subject. Last week uh, on um, NBA Shootaround on ESPN, they were asking uh, Paul Pierce, 
who do they think had a better career, himself or Dwayne Wade? And, you know, you're supposed to have confidence in yourself and you're supposed to believe in yourself. So anything that Paul Pierce said, I'm not holding it against him. Just listen. Tail of the tape. Both NBA Finals MVP. You have him in career points. He's got more playoff points. You are a more clutch shooter overall. He's got more playoff points. Paul, riddle me this. Who is the better NBA player? That's easy. I can say that off the bat. That's me. <laughs> if you give me Shaq, if you give me LeBron, he did. And, and, call the big and, three. And, 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 and yeah, I, we got that late, but like early in my career. If I you, mean, what are you if doing? If you right give now? me these guys early in my career. What, well, let me ask you this. What would have been a perfect time for you, Paul? Let's make sure we get this right. When I was 24 years old. Okay. You give me Shaq. When I'm 24, 25, you give me LeBron and Bosh. I'd be sitting on five or six championships. Easy. So then uh, who has the better uh, NBA uh, career? I played 10 years, uh, Please, I played 10 years with who? Well, in all fairness to Paul Pierce, I mean, what is he supposed to say when you're, you're comparing him with another guy that you played against for a very long time? I mean... You know, Dwayne Wade was a 13-time All-Star, eight-time All-NBA player, three-time NBA champion, uh, NBA Finals MVP. Paul Pierce, 10-time NBA All-Star, four-time All-NBA player, and uh, uh, NBA one NBA championship ring and uh, NBA Finals MVP. So, I mean, what do you expect him to say? You know, I'm just, I'm just surprised that this has been made such a big deal. You know, people have made such a big deal out of this. Um, probably outside of Boston, most people will go with Dwayne Wade. I mean, I will say this, that I think they both had stretches in their career where one was better than the other. I mean, you know, you had 2006 when Dwayne Wade just went otherworldly and literally single-handedly took over an NBA final series with his team down two to nothing. And really... You know, and I'm not lying. I'm not exaggerating when I say pretty much single-handedly won, beat the Dallas Mavericks. Now, of course, when they get LeBron James five years later, um, five seasons later, you know, a lot of people say that Wade slowed down because of age and what I mean because of age. Well, when LeBron first got to the Heat, Dwayne Wade was still in his twenties, so maybe injuries did catch up. But I also firmly remember that 2011 series against Dallas where um, Miami lost, had they have won that series, the MVP would not have been LeBron James. It would have been Dwayne Wade. Um, I mean, I mean, if it was me personally, I guess I would say that Dwayne Wade had the better career, but I'm not going to sit there and fault Paul Pierce for having confidence. He's supposed to think he had a better career because he had a Hall of Fame career in itself. Like I said, I'm just surprised at the magnitude that this topic has has become. Of course, Gabrielle Union didn't take kindly to it as, you know, she lashed out uh, on Twitter and fried Paul Pierce, but she's Dwayne Wade's husband. So what do you expect? I just thought that would be kind of fun, you know, kind of a chuckling topic to bring up. And, um, you know, with that being said, wet a buzzer, wet a buzzer, wet a buzzer. All right. Now I'm going uh, into the life topic. I'm going to go back to a subject uh, that I spoke about on Saturday. I opened up the show talking about the death of the late Nipsey Hussle, the rapper and um, just all around a guy who had changed his life around and was doing so much for the uh, community. And, you know, I gave our condolences to his family as well as everybody has, as well as uh, Lauren London. That was, that was his lady. They have a child together. And um, now all of a sudden, Kodak Black, Kodak Black takes it upon himself. I think when he's on a tour bus with his boys or whatever to make some comments about Lauren London and I'm just like whoa whoa dude I'll let you guys hear it for yourself if you haven't already heard it my nigga Lauren London that baby though she gonna be out here single she gonna be a whole widow out here I'd be the best man I could be fuck she's gonna be the best man I'd give her a whole year she might need a whole year to be be crying and shit. Yeah, right. I ain't trying to shoot that hoe. I'm saying, listen, look, look, look. No, she could do two, three years, but I just try to be that guy. I try to be like, if you need a friend to holler us, so does he know I. Yeah, 
I mean, okay, Lauren London, that baby, though, she about to be out here single. Why do you talk like that? Biatch. And, I mean, and then she about to be a whole widow, though. Like, word? Like, dude, like, uh. for one, Kodak, Kodak Black comes off as just being a fucking asshole, just being a little idiot. I mean... To be honest with you, I'm not a fan of his. Um, I rock with a couple of songs that he's in, but he's just like I, I was. I would ask the question, why do they sign guys like this? But I already know the answer, and it may not be the answer that's agreed with. It's just my opinion, just to continue a perpetual stereotype of ignorant young black people. To group us and box us all in. I ain't got nothing to do with that nigga. Like, like, dude. Like, dude. She just lost her man, her best friend, her soulmate, the father of her child. And you talking about some, she about to be single. She about to be a whole widow. I beat up, hey, man, I can't be. Like, shut the fuck up. Biatch. Like, oh my goodness. Like, dude, like... Kodak Black is just a little idiot. He's an idiot. Talking about some he'll be the best man that he can be. Why would she want to go to somebody who is a pioneer? Somebody who was really doing something good to uplift him uh, to uplift his family and his community. Why would at first, why would she even want to go from somebody like him to your old helium voice sounding, ignorant, funky looking old ugly black ass little boy looking self? Why would she want to do that? I be the best man and I can't be. And she still wouldn't. She still wouldn't mess with your old uck ass. These nuts. Like, I'm serious. Like, like, that stuff like that just makes me mad. Because, for one, like I said, Nipsey Hussle has only been gone for a week. You know what I'm saying? He's not even in the ground yet. And you already talking about some she that baby, though? She about to be single? She about to be a whole widow? Like, why is niggas so dumb? Like, for real, why is niggas so dumb? You know, and I, and to be honest with you, he done pissed off a whole lot of people with that one because, I mean, T.I. came at his neck. Hey, Kodak Black, you out of pocket, nigga. Fix that shit. Quickly, expeditiously. Nigga, you got a pocket, nigga. Ain't nobody else gonna say it, nigga. I done said it to you, nigga. And if I see you, I'ma say it in your face, nigga. You got a pocket, nigga. Get your motherfucking self together. And I think that's honestly well put because he was very out of pocket with that. You could even hear one of his boys in the background when he was saying all that stuff about Lauren London saying that it's too soon, it's too soon. And then he gonna say, I'm not trying to, to shoot at her. I don't, I don't know what else you call it. I mean, because... One of his boys was smart enough to know that there was going to be some type of a backlash from this because, you know, you're talking about a whole hip hop nation all across the country, even the world that's mourning the loss of this man. And you're going to say that about his woman in regards to his woman, you know, and one of your boys had sense enough to know that this is too fresh in the minds of people. And that there's going to be some type of a backlash from this. And then what he did next. Oh, my goodness. Hey, listen, though. Hey, real shit, this is going to be my last time. This is going to be my last time talking about this. Let me find what the fuck I want to say for that. Hold up. All right, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Sure. Yeah. Hey, so, uh. If I disrespect you, no one under, in any shape or form, I'm sorry. Even though I didn't. And rest in peace to dude. Y'all already know what I said. I said dude encouraged me to do shit for the community. But anyhow, my bad to them two. 
But for all you other people like trying to fake act like y'all love boying me on the internet or checking me on the internet, that's how you feel, bro. That's how y'all want to feel. And I got a whole tour. Like, I'm in Georgia right now. Tomorrow I'll be in Norfolk, Virginia. Like, wherever y'all see me at, if that's how y'all feel, that's how y'all feel. Don't try to little boy me on no internet. Like, oh, motherfucker, motherfucker. Nigga, you could hit my line. Rest in peace to the dude. If I disrespect it, knowing nothing in any way, even though I know I didn't, my bad. My bad. Man, I was worse when he tried to shoot his goddamn shot. What kind of a... What kind of an apology was that? I don't know who told him that he needed to apologize, but you got my vote for one of the world's worst apologies. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you know, see, and he starts going off on a rant of how people trying to come at him on social media, you know, saying anything about him on social media won't do anything to help this dude. It really won't. Because like I said, it's something something's not there with him you know what i mean something is not there with him and like i said he pissed off a whole lot of people a whole lot of people and uh the ogs are uh um saying what they gotta say too uh, i don't know if y'all remember spice one the rapper but he had this to say guess y'all see now huh yeah you see what the fuck i was talking about now huh y'all thought i was tripping oh he tripping man he just Mad because he old and, and, and he let them little niggas get their money, man. And, you know, let them, you know, don't be dissing them little niggas, man. You tripping. And, and, and you see what happened, right? You see that shit, right? You see that disrespect? Y'all see that shit, right? I'm trying to tell y'all motherfuckers, man. These niggas is out here disrespectful. Fuck these little young ass niggas, dude. If they gonna think they can come in here and talk shit about niggas like that. Man, fuck these niggas, dude. Fuck Kodak Black. Man, something wrong with that nigga. He's fucking illiterate or something. You know what I'm saying? Something is mentally fucked up about the dude. And the rest of these niggas out here thinking they can get out here and talk shit. You know what I'm saying? About niggas and thinking there won't be no repercussions. Just keep on talking, nigga. Keep on talking, nigga. I'm telling you, he pissed off a lot of people uh, with that little stunt that he pulled. Wouldn't... um. Wouldn't make any trips out to L.A. if I were him in the, in the near future. That's just me. I mean, that's why I said one of his boys was on that bus saying too soon. Uh, was saying too soon because somebody on that bus had sense enough to know, yo, bro, you crossing a line that you, that doesn't need to be crossed right now. And like I said, it just makes me mad because, you know, you give, you know, we love giving. I'm not going to say we as in. I'm not going to say we as in me or anybody who thinks similar to me, but the spotlight loves to be given to such ignorance, to such ignorance. And it really just keeps this this negative stereotype about black people, particularly about young black men. That's just it just makes me sick because we we as a community are so much better than that. We are so much better than that. And um, now, apparently in Los Angeles, all over Los Angeles, they've stopped playing Kodak Black's music. I mean, okay. I mean, I don't know exactly what that's going to do because, you know, he doesn't have many mainstream hits. I mean, I mean, I guess you, 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 you stop playing ZZ, and I guess you take his verse off of um, the Gucci Man and Bruno Mars song, I guess. I mean, but I mean, if that's your way of letting him know, hey, we didn't appreciate what you said. You're not welcome around here right now. We're not even going to bump your stuff. Then I guess so be it. Um, and also report that one of his shows got canceled. So, you know, you just, you know, I mean, I'm not against anybody having an opinion, but. You have to be mindful, especially when somebody just died. You know, when somebody lost a loved one and, you know, you talking, you start talking real slick out the mouth just because, you know, what I'm saying how you view her outwardly because you think she looked good, you know. But I mean, that's just show some respect, man. You know, just show some respect. 
I mean, that was that was just as disrespectful as it can get. Like I said, what, what does she want with you? What does she want with you? You going to meet her and try to spread your wings? Shut the fuck up. Shut up. You know, I mean, I don't get it because I will say this, this, you know, the this younger generation of rap, you know, these 90s babies, you know, these I, even early 2000s babies, they on some other shit. They really are. You know, and it's just, I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. Because like I said, I'm not even a fan of his music. I don't even think he can, I really don't even think he can rap. I mean, his, you know, his voice itself is just annoying. But I mean, it. he just, he's, he's the, you know, stuff like that is the reason why people just sit back and laugh at, and laugh at us, you know. And uh, and not and and it wasn't just Ti and Spice One who went off about it. You know the game um, uh, went on line, went on um, social media and ranted about it. You know Little Wayne, uh, several other people have. You know and like I said, I don't know what L. A. banning his music for banning you know taking his music off is gonna do. You know and as far as the game goes, you know I understand. You know Nipsey was the game's friend. I mean, but, you know, earlier this year, you just put out a track where you were bragging about having sex with married women. You know what I mean? So I kind of don't get that neither. You know, the consistency is a little bit rocky there, particularly, like I said, taking his music off. Most rap music is about disrespecting women or even when female rappers rap, you know, a lot of it. A lot of women be disrespecting themselves, so I don't get that. I just think that's just trying to send a message to him in particularly saying, we don't fuck with you right now. And if that's the case, then I believe message sent. But like I said before, why is niggas so dumb? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, just I don't know. But I just I, I wanted to get on that subject because I was just like when I heard that, I was like, well, damn damn you know i mean this is everybody is still i'm listening to the radio yesterday and hearing djs on air crying about how upset and hurt they are at the loss of nipsey hustle and you sitting on a tour bus smoking weed talking about something she about to be single like dude like i said he comes across as a real idiot but anyway this has been another episode of Sports Plus Life. I'm about to get on up out of here. Like I said, it's a beautiful day in Richmond, Virginia. My son should be home in a few minutes. And um, if you are not subscribed yet, definitely hit that subscription button. Final for national championship, excuse me, national championship game tonight. Go Cavaliers. I'm going to get back at y'all later. Peace.